Hello, I'm Juliet Foster. I'm Dean of Education at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at King's College London, and I'm a social psychologist. I'm also academic lead for student mental health and well-being at King's College London, and I'm joined today by Dr Nicola Byram, and we're going to be talking about student mental health and well-being in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. So Nicola is a senior lecturer in psychology at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience, and she's also director of the UKRI-funded student mental health research network, Smarten, as well as being founder of the Student Minds student mental health charity. So Nicola, I have some questions I'd like to ask you uh, about uh, the way that universities might be responding to uh, the current coronavirus pandemic and student mental health in general. And the first one really is just to ask you, so at the end of last year and the very early part of this year, before the coronavirus pandemic really took centre stage, it felt as if it was a really important time for student mental health <clears throat> in the UK. Student Minds had published their university mental health charter, um, your Smarter Network had had its first very successful conference. Um, then we had also seen the, the OFS challenges funded projects were all up and running around student mental health. So do you think that the challenges that students, staff and universities are now facing in light of the coronavirus might have shifted the agenda on student mental health in any way? I think that's a fantastic question, Juliet. Thank you. I, I, I think the priorities have shifted, but I'm not too sure they should have done. So we are seeing a shift, obviously, towards a bit more of a crisis response. How do we respond in this immediate situation? Um, but student mental health remains a really important priority. And in fact, I mm. guess in this context, it's even more of a priority. We know that uh, this lockdown situation, all of the changes for students are aggravating to the stresses that they're experiencing. Mm. But what we were seeing before the pandemic was this really energetic move towards a whole university approach for student mental health and that shift is essential and I think it remains essential in this context. The universities have seen a really dramatic increase in the number of students seeking support for their mental health, um, not, not just in this context but over the recent years. Um, and we're really in a position where universities can't be sending ever more students towards their mental health services. That, that's just not a sustainable model. If we took an analogy for physical health, if we were seeing ever more students presenting with broken legs, we wouldn't be investing in the orthopedic surgery team. We'd be thinking about how do we stop them breaking their legs? Mm. And that's what the whole university approach is trying to do. We're trying to take a health promotion perspective to think about where are the problems arising and how do we reduce the number of students who are developing substantive mental health problems and mm. reduce that pressure on the services. And this isn't just about improving mental health literacy or teaching students how to look after their mental health. It's about thinking about the institutional and societal factors that are contributing to risk and addressing those seriously. Um, and, and that approach really asks everyone within the university context to think about student mental health and consider what role they play, what role their service plays, what role their interaction with students plays in um, reducing risk and supporting better mental health. And I think in this lockdown situation and, and, the, and, the, and all the challenges that the pandemic have raised, we really need everyone within the university environment to feel like they can do their bit. They can think about their colleagues, their peers and the students they engage with um, and just consider how their mental health is doing. Because as we're fragmented and, and disparate and doing everything online, every contact that we have with someone else matters because there are so much, so, uh, there are fewer of them. So each contact matters. And there the whole university approach really starts to become more important. So I, I hope that with the changes we've seen, we don't see a reduced focus on the whole university approach. It still remains really important. And it's vital to remember that this, uh, I guess, focus on student mental health isn't just a luxury. It's not an added bonus that we get to do when everything's OK. It is, it, it's, it's essential for us ensuring health and educational equality. Um, we, we, we know the transition to university is a high risk period for, 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 for young people. It, it, there's a real risk of developing mental health problems with all of the changes in their lives. Um, and we know that students who experience mental health problems are, have poor educational outcomes, that they're at higher risk of dropping out of university, of prolonging their studies and of failing their, their, uh, their assessments. Mm -hmm. um, 
So uh, not getting the piece right around mental health has real problems for, for, for equality of education, equality of life outcomes and equality of health. I guess I wanted to end wanted to end that that answer, Juliet, by just thinking that actually I, I don't want to paint universities as being uh, no, not doing their bit on this, that they are in a really difficult position. They're, 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 the institutions are under huge financial stress at the moment. And in that context, everyone is worried about sort of the, the immediate future of the sustainability of the institution and people's jobs, and whether we can keep teaching students. And none of that is really conducive to thinking about student mental health seriously. So I think there is a little bit of a challenging situation here that there are strong messages from the government that we need to be prioritizing, prioritizing student mental health, looking after our students. Um, and I, I think we need clarity on how then that sits with the financial support that the government is providing for universities. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Nicola. Yeah, that, that that's really interesting. I think it's a it's a really important reminder of that broader context as well. But as you've said, we are also at the moment facing the the challenge of of the pandemic. So, what do you think universities' priorities should be at the moment in that kind of immediate context of facing the pandemic when it comes to when it comes to mental health? Yeah, and um, <laughs> there are. Well, I guess I, I, I am concerned, I remain concerned about the students that have long term serious mental health mm -hmm. problems. And we've seen sort of a sporadic response from the NHS, variable responses. Some services are continuing, some services have been on hold um, and it, it, it's quite difficult to navigate. Um, we know that the students that are most vulnerable are also probably the ones that are most likely to have stayed in accommodation at universities. And I just think this piece just place quite a responsibility on universities to think about uh, do those students are those students in contact with the support services that mm -hmm. they need that mm -hmm. might be beyond the universities but then do universities have a care coordination responsibility there I think more generally we need to think about the longer term piece so that the the, the next academic year what are universities doing to prepare for the next academic year in terms of student mental health. And there are just four points I wanted to flag here. Mm. And we know the financial stress that students are likely to be under and financial stress really contributes to mental health problems. There's a strong link there. Lots of students work over the summer and work in casual work. And there's a real likelihood that that's not going to be happening this summer. So university students are going to be facing higher financial stresses. Job insecurity is going to be increased as we mm -hmm. enter into a recession. It's going to be harder for students graduating to, to, to secure the work that they were expecting to do so. And we know job insecurity contributes towards anxiety. So universities need to be mindful of that and, and that, that added impact on, on the student experience. Um, academics, how we are teaching students. This is, this is really crucial. Um, mm -hmm. All students have contact with the, the people that are teaching them, their curriculum. This is our key point of contact with our students. Um, we're seeing ever increasing interest in sort of the bells and whistles of, of, of supporting mental well-being and helping students look after their mental well-being. But actually, it's really essential that we get the basics right. We know if we don't teach students well, that causes stress and anxiety. And I think focusing on the basics is ever more essential as we're looking at moving education online and there's more pressure to teach online. How are we, how are we going to get that right? And I guess but for all academics, we need to think about how do we get the very basics right to scaffold the students learning experience to reduce the stress and anxiety they experience. Mm. And finally, the transition in this cohort of students joining university this year, they have not sat their exams. Mm. They've had disruption to their end of their schooling experience and that move into university is going to be different. But mm. we don't really know what the campus is going to look like that and that difference is going to be challenging. And we need to think really carefully about how we support students to make the academic transition and the social transition so that they feel like they belong to the academic institution when they move. I think those are all really important points. And my final question then really just kind of helps us hopefully to, to look to the future here, because it seems to me it's, it's really important that the projects that we're putting in place at the moment 
have some kind of longevity that that rather than being an attempt to quite understandably just address the immediate context the immediate uh, short term solutions that we might need to find uh, in in what's obviously a critical situation um, that we actually think about what's going to happen in the future as well. Do you think that there are ways in which universities can use what they need to put in place at the moment in this immediate situation uh, to help to develop structures that, that can address some of the problems and the issues uh, relating to student mental health that, that we were aware of before the pandemic? Yeah. Work we've done with SMART and trying to identify some of the priority questions for student mental health identifies two that students really care about. They really care about understanding um, how their academic work interacts with their mental health and, and the relationships there. And they also really care about inclusion, belonging and loneliness. These are really important to them around mental health. I think both of them are really important in this current context, but what we can do now might have longer term impact. So mm. if we can get the piece right around supporting students to feel like they engage uh, engage with the university now, if we can, the work we do now, the lessons we learn around helping students feel less lonely, this can all have longer term benefits for the sector. These are issues that we need to deal with anyway, regardless of the pandemic. So work in this space is really valuable. And then our opportunities as we're moving education online to think about it not as sort of an emergency response of how do we cope now, but to think are we actually building for a new normal? There mm. are possibilities to explore how we get online education uh, to, to support better student engagement. And so I, I know it, it's not easy to be doing this under pressure and at speed, um, but there is a real opportunity to think creatively about whether this is an opportunity to get more students engaged in their education. Thanks. That was really, really interesting, Nicola. Um, some really uh, important points I think you've raised there. Um, obviously, it's a challenging time, but I think, as you say, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that maybe some of the things that, that we can do now as universities to support our students uh, will have uh, longer term um, uh, consequences, positive consequences as well. Thanks very much for the conversation. Thank you.